Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Terminator Genesis review. Khaleesi Sarah Connor taking over for Cersei Sarah Connor. In case you guys didn't remember, this is actually the fifth Terminator movie, but the sixth Terminator installment because of the TV series with Lena Headey. That was a Fox show from a long time ago, but if you dig really deep, you can actually find the episodes. You can definitely chart different eras in the franchise. You have like the James Cameron era with those first two films. Then you, then you have like the middle films that we can forget about, number three and four. Then you have the TV era with Cersei Lannister and Summer Glau. And now we have Daenerys Targaryen, Sarah Connor. The real question is, is how do you tell a new and interesting story in the Terminator universe when the premise is always the same? Machines trying to defeat man by changing the timeline. Typically the way the previous Terminator films have addressed this is that you go back to different points in time or you have films that focus on different characters inside the paradigm. I'd say this film has the most in common with the first Terminator film. It honors a lot of very specific moments from that very first film. So if you want to prepare for this, like if you're not going to see it till this weekend, I would re-watch the original Terminator film. It felt like there was just enough eye winking without being too nostalgic. But the film just like never quite finds its emotional core. I just to hand it to him, the, the writers definitely tried to leave behind some of the pre-assumptions that you have going into this, in, you know, in that John Connor plays a certain role, Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor have, have their own roles, then you have the bad Terminators, you have the sympathetic Terminator. Usually each of the films themselves try to kind of shuffle the cast in, in the way that they focus on, on that core group. This film definitely has a little fun with that, but I feel like it just never connects with you on, on the visceral level of a movie, say, like Mad Max Fury Road. It's not a totally fair comparison because I, f I feel like inside this Terminator universe, there are a lot more story constraints than there are with, say, like Mad Max. That film wasn't quite as burdened as the Terminator films are with certain predetermined story points. As in, you know, machines take over, humans try to go back in time to change the past so that they can defeat the machines. It makes me think a lot about what's going to be going on with, with The Flash Season 2 now that they've introduced time travel on that show. Because it's like, how do you explain the logic of time travel without getting too silly? So the film addresses that in, in a really funny way. I know everybody's wondering about Amelia Clark because she's, she's starting to break into like some really big mainstream movies now. She doesn't quite hold a candle to Linda Hamilton, but, but again, they're, they're really trying to do something different with these characters. So I try not to make too many direct comparisons with, with other portrayals of that character. Like Lena Headey's Sarah Connor, very different from Amelia Clark's Sarah Connor. The changes in her character are totally explained by the logic of the film, so, so it's not a really big issue. I don't want to say too much about Matt Smith's role because he was a lot of fun. He was one of my top three characters in the film, but to explain his role any more than that is, is a bit spoilery. Jason Clark, probably my second favorite performance in the film, you know, behind Amelia Clark as Sarah Connor. This is really her film as much as the first Terminator film is Linda Hamilton's film. There was a certain point in the, the James Cameron era where the film shifted and like Terminator 2 became all about John Connor, whereas the first film was all about Sarah Connor. The problem with the story, I think, is, is that it doesn't follow her story in a, in a meaningful way. It's almost like halfway through the film, the story shifts perspectives and, and the, the whole film tries to build around a different character, whereas you know, you're kind of expecting it to be about Amelia Clark. I understand they're trying to do something new, but but I feel like it really kind of takes you out of the story and you, you kind of lose your emotional connection with Sarah Connor. Sometimes when they cast certain actors in a film, like they get a really big actor, they'll, they'll change the story to feature them more. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I feel in this case, it does not. And I'm not talking about the governor. Arnold Schwarzenegger, just to talk about his performance, he will always and forever be the Terminator, along you know with Robert Patrick as the T-1000. We have to give him credit too. I knew almost every major story detail about the movie going into it, so there weren't a whole lot of surprises in, in terms of plot twists. But there is one really nice moment you need to keep your eyes peeled for that, that kind of honors the legacy of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick. I have no idea what their plans for the future of the series are. The rights have been passed around a lot of different places. That's one of the reasons why it took so long to get this film off the ground. The film does a good job of closing this story so that it can exist by itself. And it's not like a big middle finger ending where, where there's a cliffhanger that's completely unexplained. So you won't walk away feeling like you got cheated out of an ending. But def definitely expect more Terminator films. Whether they come in two years or four years or five years, they'll, they'll come. There will be more Terminator. So here's my big question for you guys. When you get a chance to see Terminator, let me know what's your favorite part of the film and what do you want to see them do with the franchise in the next installment? I mean, like, what can you do that's new with Terminator that we haven't seen before? 
I would hope that they would have the guts to focus on different characters and just go with that. Just just leave pre-existing characters behind. Like maybe you take one or two, but you don't stick to the old paradigm. That's why I get really excited when I, when I hear about movies like Star Trek 3. They, they just announced that it's called Star Trek Beyond. They're like, it is definitely not going to be The Search for Spock, which was the original third movie with, with this same cast. But I definitely give a giant thumbs up to Amelia Clark's performance. She, I mean, she's my favorite part of the film. I, I feel like any shortcomings of the film are the fault of the script. Alan Taylor's the director. He directed a lot of Game of Thrones, so he's worked with Amelia Clark before. He also directed Thor The Dark World. He's done some, some big stuff. He's a fairly competent director. So I feel like most of the issues with this movie are with the story itself, with the script. But it's still definitely worth checking out, so go check it out and then come back on this video and let me know what you think. Just do be careful to use spoiler tags if you, if you have seen it, just because most people probably won't see this till the weekend. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening this week. I'm slowly getting ready for Comic-Con, so I'm going to start rolling those videos out in between Flash and Marvel stuff. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. While you guys wait for all that stuff to post, you can click here for my latest Game of Thrones video from yesterday. And you can click here to learn about what's going on with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.